Hello and welcome to the session on trigonometry. This is brought to you by Handa Kafanda. The very basic idea for trigonometry stems from the right angle triangle. The most common mistake that I have seen people making is the fact which one is the perpendicular and which one is the base. Please remember the side which is opposite to the angle in concern is your perpendicular. So if I am asked for sin theta in this particular diagram, say A, B, C, sin theta will be perpendicular upon the hypotenuse or AB by AC. Cos theta will be based upon the hypotenuse or CB by CA. If instead of theta, my angle of concern was alpha, then my perpendicular and base would change. Then my perpendicular will become BC and my base will be B. So now my sin theta will be CB by CA and my cos theta will be AB by AC. It is also important to realize how the sines and cosines and all those angles behave in case of quadrants. In the first quadrant, all of them are positive. In the second quadrant, only sine is positive. In the third quadrant, only tan is positive. In the fourth quadrant, only cos is positive. Why is it so? Say you pick up a random point, h, k. Then, for this particular point, the angle made is theta. So, for tan, the height is k here and the base is h. So, sine will be k by the hypotenuse, both of them are positive. Cos will be h by the hypotenuse, both of them are positive. But if I am doing the same thing in let's say the third quadrant, what happens then? And this point is say x comma y. Component is negative, y component is also negative. Hypotenuse, since it is the distance from the origin, is always positive. What will be sine theta in this case? y by the hypotenuse y is negative. So, my sin theta is also negative. Cos theta will be x by the hypotenuse. x is negative. So, negative by hypotenuse a positive quantity cos theta will also be negative. But tan theta is the perpendicular upon base or y upon x. y is negative, x is negative. Both of them are negative and that is the reason why in the third quadrant tan is positive. It is recommended you do the same analysis for all four quadrants. Say, I am given a huge angle which is can be represented as sin of 90n plus theta. Then if n is even, then it will remain sin theta. If n is odd, then it will change to cos theta. If however I had cos of some angle, then cos would have behaved the same way. It would have remained cos theta or it would have changed to sin theta. Tan would have either remained the same or it would have changed to cot theta. But this just gives me the values. The positive sign or the negative sign of the final answer depends on which quadrant my angle lies in. Say, for an example, I take the value of sine of 490 degree. I can write it as sine of 19 to 5, that is 450 plus 40 degree. So, since it is an odd multiple, 5 is odd, it will convert to cos theta or cos 40. Once again, the plus sign or the minus sign will be determined by the quadrant. 490 degrees, where will it lie? One full circle makes it 360. Another 90 degree, that makes it 450. So it lies 40 degrees in the second quadrant. In the second quadrant, my sign is positive. That means my answer will be plus cos 40 degrees. Say, I am given a triangle ABC. A is a vertex, side opposite to it is of length A. B is a vertex, side opposite to it is of length B. C is a vertex, side opposite to it is of length C. There is something called the sine rule, which is A by sine of the angle, B by sine of the corresponding angle, and C by sine of the corresponding angle. They maintain a constant ratio. If I want to find out cos of a particular angle, and I know the three sides, say I want to find out cos of A. B square plus C square, or sum of the squares of the two sides which are forming the angle, minus square of the side which is opposite to it, which in this case is A square, divided by 2BC or twice the product of the two sides. Once again, cos A will be B square plus C square minus A square by 2BC. Another important argument, in case, another important factor in case of trigonometric questions is the angle of elevation and the angle of depression. Say a person is standing here. This is his horizontal or his eye level. Anything which is above it, he will have to tilt his head up and form the line of sight. The angle that is made by the line of sight 
with the horizontal viewing line is known as the angle of elevation. If he is looking at a point which is below the line of sight, say I am standing right here and I am looking at a point below, then whatever angle the line of sight makes with the horizontal is known as the angle of depression. It is also important to understand that if I move towards the object that I am viewing, I will have to either tilt my head even further up or I am looking at object down, I will have to tilt my head further down. And that is the reason as you move closer, the angle of elevation as well as the angle of depression both increase or in this particular case E dash is greater than E or D dash is greater than D where E dash, E, D dash and D. E dash and E are the angle of elevations and D dash and D are the angle of depressions. That wraps up the session on trigonometry. Please stay tuned at Handa Kafanda to watch other videos on other chapters. Thank you.